Also here, one more thing, and I think a lot of people forget, like these scales are your friends. Like the, these are helping you to, to bring your painting to a finished state. So if you know something is really direct and close to the light, and then you look, okay, this is an 80. So this, is, this looks already right. And the arm has the value 80. I go more into the shadows, then it makes sense that it has less light information. A mid-tone can technically be closer to the dark side or the light side. But a shadow never can really be inside the light side and vice versa, right? Because otherwise that would be extremely contrasty. That's why this hand here is a bit too dark. It is very close to the light source. So we need to make this a little bit brighter. Mm -hmm. There can be something like a core shadow, but even this core shadow is way brighter than it actually seems. And it's still, the readability is still there, right? Um, same for here, like this hand is, it's, it's a 19, but I would say it's actually a bit closer to us in terms of value. Less is more sometimes, especially when it comes to rim light. Um, and making rim lights everywhere is very tempting, but uh, we need to be able to, to control the light. So we want to make sure that we are not make rim light just for the purpose of it looks cool. We want to make rim light to give it a final small touch, give it a nice touch of three dimensionality, but if we don't know how to control this, this is very dangerous to our image. Okay, but now uh, we are slowly changing it and I'm taking a bit of this stuff out here, of all this light, but you see that in terms of value, this becomes more of a, of a layering and structure. So we have the dark foreground and we have the medium midground and then we have the background. Now I see that actually we can even bright this up here. So we bright up the upper part here because there's a lot of atmosphere. Now it gets closer to us. Now we start to see more detail. And then it goes into the shadows. So we have these holes here. The shapes are not, yeah. Yeah, I, not, not see, the best. Yeah. And also make sure that you, you, you keep the shape of the head like you had the intention and then you don't mess up the silhouette by doing stuff like this, adding just, just because you think there needs to be another eye or something. It's not necessarily the case. Sometimes less is more. And also these shapes, they, they should be very a bit more. So it's, it's not so repetitive the same. It's like the rhythm, right? Like you don't want a monotonous rhythm, like dun, 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 you want a melody. You want dun, 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 dun. I mean, the face could have a bit more form shadows. So we could basically render form of the face a bit more, give it a bit more contrast. So there's also a stronger readability, but this looks already really, really nice. Um, or this arm, if it's really foreshortening, I would make it maybe a bit stronger. Maybe also thinking about, like maybe grabbing a reference for the, for the hand. So that the hand is really, then we make sure it's really something that like grabs the viewer, yeah. right? And it comes yeah. more towards the viewer. When you have something grabbing into the camera, then it's it's sometimes really tough to figure out. Then it's easiest just to put your like put your phone on the on the table, make some photos, you making this pose, and then just taking this as a reference. Good job! It looks very promising already and I think that can be a great portfolio piece. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. If you also want to get mentored by me, make sure to check out my website, janoschmanesart.zone and apply for the mentorship. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Take care, ciao, ciao.